Africa, I'm going to talk about three issues in my speech. First of all, so what should be the solution to the existing racism? I would like to examine any other counter, counter solution that open your position have it presented in this debate. Secondly, I'm going to talk about the impact for operational efficiency of police institutions. Finally, and most importantly, how we can reduce communal racism that people embrace right now in the status quo. Very straightforward argument. Moving on to the first clash point this debate and what should be the solution. What open opposition presented is this is not just a regional problem, this is a national problem, therefore national policy or national politics uh, should be responsible for dealing with these kind of issues. Therefore it's unfair to impose this kind of burden and responsibility upon the shoulder of regional police institution. I understand that. But what we would like to emphasize is our policy is a fast step because in order to uh, in order to support the national uh, policy, we need to cultivate political will to support racially inclusive policy in the long term. Right now in the status quo, as long as residents in the community are exposed to racial injustices consistently, people do not have political incentive to democratically support politicians who advocate for racial policies in the long term. But under our model, when people construct a narrative that everybody can access same justice regardless of their ethnicity and race, and that's how they can cultivate the political and democratic will to support that kind of policy in the long term. Therefore, in order to uh, support their counter model, our policy is crucial and necessary in the short term. Moreover, when I ask the point of information that Jews oppose any quota system that exists in the status quo, they say they, they support no quota system. It's contradictory. If that principle stands as contradictory to the counter proposal that they, they actually are emphasizing this debate. In order to like, create a racially inclusive society, we need to have some sort of quota system, we need to some sort of adjustment artificially so that we can force, so forcefully dismantle existing, perpetuated and entrenched racism in the community. That's our position in this debate. Second issue is about operational, operational efficiency. Their principle is that no, police have to be responsible for everybody's interests Therefore, it is unfair that police focus on specific racial uh, issues and racial, racial problems. We agree and we concede the principle completely that everybody has to access the same justice and police have to act in the interest of everybody. But the real problem is that justice is racially operationalized in the status quo and not everybody is able to access the same justice and outcome in, realistic, and in reality. And that's the exact problem we would like to uh, Address. So, what kind of practical uh, problems that we're talking about? For example, investigation process is very unfair. It's almost like a racial profiling. Like police officers, like actively investigate or like uh, uh, interrogate like uh, racial minorities consistently, rather than you know, widening the scope of investigations. For example, allocation of resources is unfair. Like, which areas are prioritized over the, the poor districts? There are some right racial minority areas that are politically abundant. This, like, police, uh, Ministry of Defense, uh, Ministry of Police do not have the incentive to spare resources or human resources, financial resources to increase the number of security camera surveillances, the number of patrol police officers in those areas. And these are the specific problems that we are, uh, we are talking about. Under this specific contextualization, how is it possible for everybody to access the same justice in, in, uh, in reality? And that's what we'd like to uh, adjust on our side of the house. So finally, how we do that? My final issue is about how we reduce the communal racism. The racism that people have, racism that police have, and racism that society has. And that's what we would like to uh, focus on uh, in my speech. So what kind of specific problem we are talking about? It's internalization of racism in their mindset. Please imagine the situation when teenagers are constantly exposed to police brut brutality based on racial prejudice consistently in their youth. What kind of perception do they construct when they become adults, for example? They have antagony to other race in general, right from the start. Even before talking to other racial groups, they have already constructed an antagonistic mindset, and that's very dangerous. The symbolistic case is a Ferguson incident. You know, the African American boy got, got, got gunshot by white uh, American police officers. And that kind of incident symbolizes the fact that teenagers or many younger generation already lack the trust with the police institution or other racial, uh, pro, uh, other racial, um, uh, other people with the different race groups in, in general. So the uniqueness of the police is that police is perceived as a guardian over the community. But when the police are enemy, people's mindset is government is our enemy, state institution our enemy, society is our enemy. So we have we have to defend ourselves by our uh, our like subjective justice with our uh, vigilantism. And that kind of mindset is very dangerous. 
Because in a long time, these people will take part in politics, democracy. However, these people are more likely to support uh, aggressively racial policies in order to defend their uh, life, defend their security. And this kind of racial division is aggrandized or exacerbated because of this kind of experiences that these people have. How do we dismantle that? Three mechanisms. First of all, our policy dilutes the psychological barriers. When you face hate speech, when you face harassment or rape, who can you talk to? If African-American boy experiences racial violence and hate speech, how, uh, how is it possible for them to talk about their experiences with white police officers? It's very difficult because of these psychological barriers. The basic uh, uh, similar example analogy is when the uh, female or women are victims of rape and sexual harassment, oftentimes they talk about their experiences with female doctors or female police officers and female lawyers rather than male counterparts because of uh, sort of those psychological barriers. This perception of sympathy is very important in the long term, right? This we can remove the psychological and uh, like a uh, uh, mental barriers for these people to report an incident to police, report the uh, uh, cases to uh, file case the file to the uh, legal institutions, and that practically addresses the many issues going forward. Secondly, about the deterrence. The reason why many people commit crimes in jurisdiction with high crime rates is because they think that they are not going to be captured by police officers. Because police are not that allied of the racial minorities. Oftentimes, racial minorities are the target of crimes because of this kind of mindset. The example is broken window policies. The reason why broken window policy was introduced in New York is because many people believe that they are not captured by uh, police officers. But even PT crime is punished with a harsher sentences that reduce the crime rates in New York in like many areas. Uh, this example exemplifies the fact that when we can you know create a generate an algorithm that everybody can be the target of the scope of investigation that reduces the crimes. Finally, about the trials. In order to convict criminals, we need to have evidences, witness, or testimony. Police, if police do not submit those evidences, it's harder for jury to convict criminals. Under our model, everybody can be the scope of the investigation. Asian police officers, white police officers, and African police officers have their own same incentive to submit as much evidence as possible. That's crucial to build, uh, build prosecution and the conviction. We are happy to propose. Thank you.